Blog Talk Radio. Franchise interviews from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Welcome to Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Listen to interviews with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys. And now, welcome your host, Marty McDermott, and Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 16 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs who own one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and we have a great show. Well, we're meeting with John Ramsey, the vice president of operations for Noodles & Company. And since 1995, the mission at Noodles & Company has been to nourish and inspire every team member, guest, and community they serve. And we're going to talk to John about that in just a moment on Franchise Interviews. So stick around, because we have a great show. Franchise Teacher. Would you like to know how to franchise your concept or grow your franchise business? Meet the experts at Franchise Teacher. The goal of Franchise Teacher is to teach, coach, consult, and advise. The team of experts at Franchise Teacher will evaluate your business model and present you with a winning business strategy. Franchise Teacher will help you decide whether or not your concept works and if it's franchisable. Franchise Teacher is proud to have over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Franchise Teacher are developers of over a dozen franchise systems which include brick and mortar as well as home-based concepts of nearly 3,000 combined franchise locations. Whether you need to add more units or get more customers, Franchise Teacher can help. We will teach. Franchise Teacher will help you learn our proven system. Coach. Franchise Teacher will help you provide a game plan to succeed. Consult. Franchise Teacher will make sure you stay on track. And advise. Franchise Teacher will help you learn from our over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Take advantage of our free, no-obligation phone consultation. Simply go to FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. That's FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. Hi, this is Connie McDermott, Administrative Assistant for Franchise Interviews, LLC, and you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews, from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia, you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 16 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs who own one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and as we were saying earlier, we have a great show. Well, today we're meeting with John Ramsey, the vice president of operations for Noodles & Company. And since 1995, the mission of Noodles & Company has been to nourish and inspire every team member, guest, and community that they serve. Hi, John. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Marty. You know, I don't know if you remember, John, I had the opportunity to interview, oh, God, I want to say it was about six or seven years ago. And, you know, what impresses me is your background in franchising. I thought, you know, maybe a good place to start is how did you get involved in franchising? Because I know it's a great story. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, like a lot of people in franchising, sort of by accident. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I'm an architect by training, uh, started my career in New York City, uh, mm -hmm. kind of going down a traditional architecture route. Uh, wound up working for Bloomingdale's, uh, discovered yeah. that they had an in-house uh, uh, retail design department, started doing retail mm -hmm. design, then I got into, mm -hmm. uh, then I joined Sabaro Restaurants on Long Island, yeah. started doing restaurant design, uh, and it was really through doing the, the restaurant development um, right. that kind of, I started working with franchisees, supporting mm -hmm. them, 
Uh, and so really kind of learned what, what they were looking for, what did they need, you know, right. how does the franchisee operate? And so, you know, it started with design and construction and real estate and franchise sales. And so I've been doing that every mm-hmm. time. It's it's amazing, John. You know, it, it is a great story, you know, because I think, you know, your experience, what you bring to the table is so important for Noodles and company. And, you know, what impresses me is the long history of Noodles and company. I mean, you're over 25 years up to this point, aren't you? Well, that's right. And, and I actually, although I've only been with the brand uh, for three years, mm-hmm. um, uh, I'll tell you a quick story is that yeah. um, back in back in 2000, uh, fast casual as a segment was really just coming on stream. Right. Uh, Panera Bread was new. At that time, That's right. I was working for uh, uh, Rubio's. Uh, if you remember, Baja Fresh was the leader sure. in the quick casual uh, yeah. uh, 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 Mexican category. Um, and uh, a group of us executives from Rubio's out here in California, we flew to Denver because Denver was sort of a hot spot. Right. Uh, at, Back in the late 90s, Chipotle, Qdoba, and Noodles were all had all started in Denver, and that was sort of the beginning of the fast casual. So we all flew to Denver to mystery shop these concepts, mm-hmm. and one of, one of my uh, co-executives with Rubio's, he fell in love with Noodles so much that he quit his job <laughs> with Rubio's that he became the first franchisee of Noodles here in California. What a great story. <laughs> you know, and it's just, you know, it's amazing in looking at the growth too, John. I mean, from, you know, when Noodles and Company first started, I mean, to where you are today. I mean, the last time I looked, you were over, was it 400 plus, I think, in like 20 right. states. I mean, it's, it's, it's really amazing how the organization has grown over that time, you know, and, and I like your category, too, because it's really, you know, when we talk about noodles, it's, it's, it's comfort food, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. It's maybe, you know, we could talk a little bit about, you know, when you're describing the concept, John, I mean, if you were at a franchise show and someone came up to your booth and they're probably familiar with the brand name uh, Noodles and Company, but and then they said, you know, so what do you guys do? How do you typically respond to the question? Yeah. So as you can appreciate, we get that question quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so it really starts with that. We're, we're a fast, casual concept. Um, and so, and we're, we have a unique menu that's centered on globally inspired noodle dishes. Right. So if you if you think of, for example, macaroni and cheese, right? Um, penne rosa, pad thai. Uh, you know, then you get into our healthy dishes like noodles. Um, right. You know that all of these dishes pe- people can relate to them very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, they understand the menu. Uh, it's not regional based. Uh, it's not right. ethnic based. Right. It's sort of this broad uh, concept of, of a menu yeah. category. So w- once you then sort of understand, okay, I got it, right? So there's very, there, there really is no other direct competitor in this category that has a noodle-based menu concept. Right. right. Uh, so you get beyond that. So now we start talking about we have attractive unit-level economics. Mm-hmm. We have world-class technology. Um, we, so it's, it's really that the, the franchise concept mm-hmm. um, is based on this menu. However, yes. the, the underlying uh, elements of, of economics, growth, opportunity are, right. are also there as well. Yeah, I think that's very powerful, John, how you mentioned, you know, um, how it appeals to, you know, all regions and, and, and really all cultures, which is fantastic. My um my wife, John, she recently started the whole uh, I guess you call it the gluten-free thing. <laughs> I, uh-huh. So does Noodles and Company, are, are, do they have gl- a gluten-free items that someone can choose from? Well, we have uh, more than one, which is nice, you right? Do. So, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a real big part of our brand is that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, people today have uh, either health concerns or dietary right. concerns, right. some of which are voluntary, some of which are, are you know, dictated by, by their bodies. Um, right. So when you talk about gluten free, we have noodles, which is zucchini noodle. Okay. Uh, we actually have a glu- gluten free noodle, which doesn't use wheat. Um, wow. And then you think of a lot of Asian dishes use rice noodles, which we have. Right. But right. it's also gluten free. So there's really more than one option. Wow. Um, That's great. It, 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 yeah. So so for your wife, a, a good example would be is like you know she may love pad thai, but mm-hmm. she I can't have pad I can't go to my Thai to a Thai restaurant anymore and have pad thai. Well, she could go right. to noodles. Can you right. order pad thai and substitute zucchini noodles? Right. So you can That's get wonderful. the flavor, the taste, the experience w- without the gluten. 
That's great. What are if you and I were to walk into a Noodles and Company together, John? Um, you know, and I'm looking at the menu. What would you recommend, or what what would, what are some of your favorites when you go into? Because I know you go into a lot of them, don't you? Oh gosh! <laughs> Not only do I go, like I said, you know, a friend of mine was the first franchisee here in California, so I have a Noodles wow. very close to my house that I've been going to yeah. for over 20 years. Wow! So my kids grew up on it. You know, right. I, my wife and I. You know, when COVID hit, I mean, it was, oh, my gosh, it was our go-to because it travels well. Sure, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I I have a hard time recommending just one. Um, sure. <laughs> so typically, typically what I do, and I think what a lot of our team members do when, when, when guests walk in and they look at our menu and they're trying to decide, is we talk about, you know, what are you thinking today in terms of taste and flavor? Mm-hmm. Um, so so for me, like, if I'm thinking, no, oh, you know what, I, I – I'm kind of thinking something uh, Zesty Italian. I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll recommend right. a pesto kind of coffee. Right. Or if I'm thinking, you know what, I want comfort food today. Give me the mac and cheese. Yeah. Pizza. Gotcha. <laughs> or, or I'm thinking spicy. Okay, I'll go. Uh, you know the uh, spiced uh, Korean uh, beef. You know. Right. So, right. So it's really kind of around flavor profile and taste. Um, so there yeah. really is something for you know for something for everyone. What you're craving that day. Right. Um, that that we could satisfy. So you know. So another way to think about it is I could I could go multiple times in the week and get so many different things. Right. Right. That satisfy what I'm looking for that day. Mm-hmm. It's it's a product that also I, I I think I read this somewhere in an interview with you, John. You mentioned how you know it 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 travels well too, doesn't it? You know, I mean for takeout. You know, I know things change a little bit in the industry. You know, during COVID, where I, I guess maybe um, the, the lunch crowd was kind of going down, but I think you mentioned something that there was an increase. It seems like there's been an increase in in, in your industry where people getting more dinner for takeout. Have you seen that? Uh, no question. So it, in yeah. fact, it really has, it, it has not reversed back, although we're seeing the dine-in and the lunch business come back. Right, um, right. But with our menu, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's the beauty of pasta, right, is that it's um, yes. it, it's acceptable at both lunch and dinner. Right, um, yes. And especially dinner, you know, one of the things that we saw during COVID that initially we couldn't quite figure out what was going on was that not only was our dinner business going up, but our mm-hmm. our um, average number of meals per ticket was going up, and we couldn't right. quite figure out, that like, how is that possible? You know, like, it, it's a family of four. Like, how much can they eat? And, right. <laughs> and, and what we realized is that, you know, a family of four was ordering six dishes. Right. And once we started yeah. talking to guests to really figuring out what was going on, they would say, oh, we, oh absolutely. Like, we, we don't want to go out tomorrow during lunch. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're quarantined, we're staying at home, we, you know, so we're going to order six dishes, we'll have three tonight for dinner, and then we'll reheat three for lunch tomorrow. Right, so right. That was that was a, a, a real uh, uh, unique understanding for us. It seems like technology is, you've, you've made it easy for the customer uh, too, John. Um, you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, how technology plays a role in the business today. I know you're very big on, you know, the mobile apps and everything like that. Yeah, so it, it, it's huge, right? It, 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 mm-hmm. it's, obviously, technology is huge in all of our lives every day, and it's become more so. I think right. we were um, we were probably a, well. I know we were definitely ahead of the curve. Mm-hmm. Even pre-COVID, um, we recognized we were already had over fifty percent of our items were ordered digitally pre-COVID. Wow, wow! Um, so it was already a big part of our business, and right. you know as as that was continued to increase, we really recognized that you know what this is not just a this is not just a change in behavior. Right. But this is really something that we could take advantage of and really uh, excel at and, and become a leader in the industry. So our technology team, yes, we, we, we obviously we have the native app, mobile app, we have digital online ordering. Mm-hmm. But I think the other piece that a, a lot of folks don't understand or recognize is that within the restaurant. You think of all the technology that's in the restaurant. You know, most mm-hmm. you have know, a back of the house computer, obviously, but you have your ordering system, you have your your labor scheduling system, um, you have guests using Wi-Fi. So mm-hmm. we recognized early on that you know what we need to really ramp up our game. And so we've really gone into the restaurant. We've created this you know this tech stack um, across the brand, both for the consumer, both for the manager. Uh, as, as well as for our franchisees, 
where and we brought it all in house. We said we have all right. these mo- all these different competing software systems, all these different technology systems. We need to create a technology platform that's integrated, uh, mm-hmm. that's functional. It, right. And so we have a, a very robust in house uh, tech team. Our, all of our franchisees use all the same technology. We have a, um, a, a support center in Denver at our corporate office, a mm-hmm. help desk that, that's manned uh, right. throughout the day. So uh, everything from the, the you know, broadband Internet coming in the door to the consumer experience at home is all controlled uh, and it's all first class. Another thing that impressed me about Noodles and Company, John, you know, what caught my attention was, you know, there was something – in the literature on the website, I, I saw you refer to uncommon goodness. And there's a lot that Noodles and Company does to give back to society. I've seen things like mac and cheese trade events. Um, you have uh, school funding nights. Uh, partic- you participate in local culture events. It seems like that's a big part of the culture. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that, too. Sure. So, you know, I, I think um, uh, we were very fortunate that early on that our founders – they recognized that, that culture was a big part of the business. And when you, when you talk about fast casual as a segment, I think that's one of the distinguishing features with a lot of these mm-hmm. brands that emerged in the 90s was that, you know, it's more than – obviously the food is important, but it's more right. than just the food. It's service experience. Right. And so, and, you know, this is not table service experience, but how do, how do you elevate the service levels of, of a guest who, who's ordering mm-hmm. – over the internet, or how do you elevate that right. experience? Like, guess just coming in to pick up takeout. Mm-hmm. Um, so we started to, so we created a culture. And, and by the way, our our mission statement has not changed in 27 years. You know, wow, is to That's nourish and inspire every guest every time. Right. Um, and our and our values haven't changed. It's we we care, we're passionate, we show pride, we love life. Mm-hmm. So these things are are something that we live, um, that everybody buys into. And, and everybody understands what the brand stands for. So uncommon goodness is, is, is kind of a way to say um, we're not different than everybody, but we're unique. Right, uh, right, right. right. It's, it's, un, it's understandable, but it, it's but you don't expect it. Um, yeah. So, so it really uh, in, infiltrates all part of our business, and the, the customers get it, especially our team members get it. Um, you know, when I joined the brand, I went through training, and, I, and um, you know, I spent a week in the restaurants, and it really struck me that the our team members love working for Noodles. Um, yeah, it's a fun environment. It's an open yes. kitchen. They, right. you know, they're, they're interacting with guests or interacting with other team members. They could be themselves. Uh, so it was really just a unique experience, and. and so that's especially when you talk about you know labor shortages and you know mm-hmm. all the changes that are going on. And, uh, right. You know, having a, having a culture that appeals to your guests, that appeals to your team members, uh, is absolutely essential. Yeah, agreed. Absolutely. Maybe we can talk a little bit about franchising, John. Um, so, because you meet with a lot of prospective franchisees, I mean, what's what's important to you when you're meeting with them, or what types of characteristics or traits are important to you when you're meeting with a prospective franchisee? And, and as you mentioned earlier, I've been doing this for many years, and mm-hmm. I think back to you know when I first started franchising. You know, typically you sort of looked at two attributes, right? You looked at right what is somebody's operational experience, and how much mm-hmm. money do they have? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's pretty simple, right? Yes. Have you worked in a restaurant? Do you have money? Okay, let's go. Um, right. I really, you know, I sort of have built this this belief and, and sort of model for the way I look at franchisees and really expand that to sort of five attributes. Um, so, yes, uh, restaurant experience and financial ability are two of them. But mm-hmm. now, now I look at what's their development experience? You know, have, have right. they worked with architect? Have they worked with a contractor? Right. Have they signed a lease before? What's right. their business acumen? Have they owned a business? Have they worked with a CPA? Mm-hmm. Uh, do, have they interacted with the local chamber of commerce? Um, you know, th- those are things that we can't teach somebody. Um, right. Somebody needs to bring that with them. And then the, the, the final piece, and I think this is probably the most important, is what's their personal character? Um, right. Do they align with our values? How do they treat people? Uh, what is their track record with people? Um, so, to me, I look at all of those. It, mm-hmm. and I don't. What, I don't just focus on 
you know, somebody could come to us without a restaurant background and yet have right. these other attributes and really yes. be a great franchise partner. Yeah, that's interesting. So the, how does the training work, John? I mean, once you decide, you know, that, that you like them, they like you, and they do want to come on board as a franchisee, do they, they come out to headquarters for that? Like, maybe you could talk a little bit about how that works. Yeah, so I, I think the training is really kind of three components. You have training, mm-hmm. you have timing, and support. Mm-hmm. Right? So right. training is, yes, you know, uh, training restaurant-level managers and the franchise partners need to learn our system. Timing is, yeah. means that you can't retain loads of information. So, we, so we're very deliberate and we schedule what you need to know, when you need to know it, and how do we reinforce so you can recall that information when you need it. Right. right. So, so the timing right. is really a critical part. Mm-hmm. And then support, you know, support is, is then the third leg of that stool, which is uh, having the systems in place across all your disciplines. Uh, right such that the franchisee could tap into that support. So we're not doing it for them, but we're there for them. Right. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so then you drill down into that. So training uh, is having certified restaurants where the management team mm-hmm. can go. Um, right. we, we use an all-digital iPad-based training modules. Mm-hmm. So at, at any given time, at any given place, somebody can be trained. Right. Um, it's about providing... We when we have new franchisees, we send a training team to their restaurant, um, so we're there with them, but we're not there to do it for them. We're there to coach their managers now. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you train a new restaurant opening team? You know, that's sort of a unique right. skill set. Um, right. So that we're there before they open, we're there when they're open, we're, we're there after they open to again to to facilitate that smooth transition from pre-opening to opening to post-opening. Um, it's about having dedicated business consultants on our staff who follow right. up, who could go back into the restaurant to meet with the franchisees, to meet with their management teams, to meet with their, their crew members. Um, so that those are all really important components um, yeah. that we have in place. You, yeah, you mentioned, I mentioned, John, that, you know, you've been doing this such a long time now, you know, and I think I asked you this question probably six or seven years ago, but I have to ask it again, you know, from all of your experience up to this point, six, seven years later, um, you know, because the majority of our listeners, we call them aspiring entrepreneurs. Most of them are looking to buy a franchise and they're pretty new to franchising as well. And we find that a lot of them are overwhelmed in the beginning because there's so many more concepts out there today than there was, you know, six, seven years ago from everything you've learned up to this point, what advice would you give to our listeners then in their quest to buy a franchise? Sure. And, and by the way, I, I love that question. And, and I do, I, I get that a lot from friends. I get it from, from folks yeah. who, you know, who, who are, um, we get a lot of people, not surprisingly, who are very loyal guests to noodles who yeah. say, gee, I love this so much. And I've now, I've moved to a new city. I don't have a noodles close to me. I wonder if I could do this. You know, right. can I open up my own noodles, right? Sure, so, yeah. <laughs> so here's, here's the advice I, I give to people. I say, mm-hmm. okay, first of all, franchising is not a job. It's a long-term commitment to a brand. It's about right. your personal passion. You know, right. it's, it's an opportunity to grow a legacy for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you first have to rethink what, a, what franchising is. Um, right. Secondly, as I share, is that not every brand is a fit for everyone. Sure. Um, you have to do your due diligence. You have to understand the right. brand strategy, understand their capabilities, their history, their track record. Um, it, and it, when you do that, you, you could then appreciate you don't get discouraged if you get turned away by a brand, right? Right. They're doing right. both of you a right. favor. <laughs> sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, the next is, is you don't get blinded by emotional attachment to a brand. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. like, you know, again, you know, you think of a, a loyal neuters customer, you know, they're so emotionally attached to the brand that they're blinded by the the responsibility or the, the challenge of becoming a right. franchisee. Right, right. right. So, so, so you have to be able to step back uh, from that emotion. Um, you know, the, the other phrase I like to use is you want to be financially conservative, but personality forward. Mm. Right? You, you need to be yourself, but don't, right. but don't be crazy. <laughs> right, right. Um, like that. You know, you know, and that, then you consult with friends and family and franchise mm-hmm. veterans. You know, that's the other thing. Yeah. I always tell people, who have you talked, you know, once I finish talking to them, I'll ask them, who do you know in your circle 
who's a franchisee already. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to them? Mm. Please go talk to them. Ask them what their journey's been like. Right. Um, that's a great point. You know, that, that's really, that, I think that um, mm -hmm. they're able to share things that I can't share with them. Right. Right, right. I think, yeah, no, I think, I think that's, that's great advice, John. And, you know, as, as, so you're, you're at the top of the organization, John. So, I mean, I have to ask you, I mean, what are Noodle and Company's plans for the future? I mean, if you could look into a crystal ball, whether it was one year or three years or five years, where do you see Noodles and Company? Yeah, so we're, um, first of all, we're in a great position. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the brand, the brand is in a great position. Um, we have a successful track record, and so we're very fortunate that we're able to grow at a sustainable rate. So when I look right. into the future, what I see for our brands, for our franchisees, is sustainable growth. Um, it is So we don't need to grow fast. Um, we're not a fad. We're not a trend. Um, is that we're able to provide uh, longevity for our team members, mm -hmm. for our franchisees. We have room right. to grow. Uh, so what I see is this growth opportunity for everybody who's involved with the brand. Um, but I also see sort of the, you know, the, the, the joy of bringing our brand to new markets and new territories. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, we, we, I get so many calls of guests who have moved. You know, we, we, we started in the Midwest. Right. Um, and as you can appreciate, there's, there's been this big migration of people you know, leaving Detroit or leaving Chicago, right. Uh, right. you know, and moving down south to, to sure. Tampa or Miami or Houston or San Antonio. Right. And, and we get these calls all the time. Gee, you know, I grew up with noodles. I want to mm -hmm. bring this to my community. You know, when are you coming here? Right. So when I think of the future, I think of our, our expansion, the opportunity that we can provide for our team members and our franchisees to yeah. grow their careers, their business, right. but at the same time satisfy our loyal guests who've also moved on, who are also right. looking to continue that tradition. Yeah, that's fascinating. What's um what's the best way, John, for our listeners to get more information on Noodles and Company? Of course, there's the franchise opportunity, but even even the product itself. I mean, is there any websites you can direct our listeners to? Yeah, so yeah, very simple, noodles.com. <laughs> okay. Is, That's uh, easy. Is, is a great, <laughs> is very, very easy. Um, I'd also strongly recommend that if they don't have the Noodles app on their on their iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or their uh, mobile devices to yeah. um, add the Noodles app. Uh, Being yeah. a rewards member has some great, you know, they get great offers. They get special, you know, first options when we do new menu item offerings. So even if you don't have a Noodles in your community, you can put the Noodles app on your phone, and when you're traveling. You know, if you're if you're in Las Vegas or Phoenix mm -hmm. or out here in California, right. um, Washington D.C., you know, go go to a local Noodles, look on your Noodles app, and you'll be really thrilled with the experience. That's fantastic. Well, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to you again, John, and I'd really like to invite you back over the next year or two as Noodles continues to grow because I think you have a wonderful franchise opportunity there. Thanks, Marty. Really appreciate talking to you again as well. Thanks, John. This has been my pleasure. We'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Coming up in our next segment, we'll be playing a clip from our great quotes and franchising podcast right here on Franchise Interviews. Franchisers, are you looking to reach aspiring entrepreneurs looking to buy a franchise? Are you looking to reach a highly educated audience on franchising? Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. Our weekly franchise radio show, where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys, and our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. Today's great quote in franchising is being brought to you by... Franchise Teacher. Would you like to know how to franchise your concept or grow your franchise business? Meet the experts at Franchise Teacher. 
The goal of Franchise Teacher is to teach, coach, consult, and advise. The team of experts at Franchise Teacher will evaluate your business model and present you with a winning business strategy. Franchise Teacher will help you decide whether or not your concept works and if it's franchisable. Franchise Teacher is proud to have over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Franchise Teacher are developers of over a dozen franchise systems which include brick and mortar as well as home-based concepts of nearly 3,000 combined franchise locations. Whether you need to add more units or get more customers, Franchise Teacher can help. We will teach. Franchise Teacher will help you learn our proven system. Coach. Franchise Teacher will help you provide a game plan to succeed. Consult. Franchise Teacher will make sure you stay on track. And advise. Franchise Teacher will help you learn from our over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Take advantage of our free, no obligation phone consultation. Simply go to FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. That's FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising, where each podcast you get to hear a great quote in franchising. You know, we've been hosting franchise interviews now almost years, and during that time, we've had some incredible quotes on the show. Today, you're going to get to hear from Carol Mercurio, and she talks about a subject that we talk frequently on the show, which is following the franchise system. She gives a lot of great other advice in addition to aspiring entrepreneurs, but I just thought her... Um, Advice was fantastic. So here we go with Carol Mercurio, Franchise Consultant. It is because success means different things to different people. Right. You know, there are people that could be very happy making forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, and there's others that would just never tolerate that. So you have to pick the right opportunity. It's going to meet not just your personal goals, but your income potential as well. You have to like what you're doing, and most of the time that'll turn into making more money. So. Oh, definitely. And, you know, the, the truth is that franchising really isn't for everyone. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, Michael Gerber, you know, one of your guests who is um, one of my heroes, so to speak. Right. I love his book. I recommend his book all the time. Yeah. And as he says, you know, there's a difference between an entrepreneur and what he calls a technician. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, and, and we'll, we'll go into that if you want to move forward in the uh, Sure, slide. absolutely. We'll go to the next slide, and uh, that's slide four, Carol says, that's all great, but... Do you have what it takes? And, right. and, and that's really what this presentation will help people do. When I do this presentation live, it takes about two hours, and, you know, there are people at the end of the presentation will run to the front door and can't get out fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> They're scared to death. Or you have those folks that just linger on because they really want to learn more and educate themselves to see if this is the right fit for them. But there's a lot to figure out, you know, before you actually can pull the trigger and make that decision. And as you mentioned just previously, the due diligence is imperative. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to do a good job of figuring that out. You know, is it the right connection personally, and are you connecting with a company that you feel is a, a comfortable marriage between the two of you? Absolutely. Right. You and so that's what we're going to do is help determine if this is, in fact, the right path to explore. And then we can move on to motivation. Okay. And, you know, if, you know, for me, I think motivation is really, really a major component of this whole process. I agree. If you're not motivated to do this, don't do it. If somebody tells you you should do it for a variety of different reasons, but it's not your own passion, right. you probably won't do well at it. And, you know, the, there's two different types of motivation. There's positive motivation and there's negative motivation. So you have to think of it as it an inspiration. Are you inspired to do this or are you desperate to do this? There's That's a big difference here. Absolutely. Are you, you know, running from something or you're running towards something. Right, right. And you you know, for me, I work Carol. with a lot of folks that have been downsized and right. they're in transition in life, and I certainly can relate to it. But they may go to looking at a business because they can't find a job. Or maybe lesser positions are offered to them, less money, less title, or maybe their severance is about to end and they need to make some decision quickly. Bad choice. 
Right. It's not a good reason to buy a business. It's, that's like a last resort it. type of decision. So you can quickly determine part of your services is finding out that motivation level pretty early on. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I won't move forward in our consultation until that candidate can tell me what their reason is. Right. And it's not just because, you know, I want control over my destiny. Who doesn't? <laughs> you know, go. everybody does. That's true. If they want to make more money. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Right, absolutely. You know, it has to go layers deeper than that, or as I look at it, you know, having a burning desire. Or I'll add to that a little pain. You know, if you can't relate to the pain, then there's no reward at the end. Absolutely. And going into business for yourself can be painful. You know, with franchising, of course, it's a little bit easier because you have all the support. But it's still you're starting a business from scratch. That's and you have to really want it. About. Right. Sorry. Right, right. We always talk about that. Uh, um, that there's no guarantee of success, but if you follow the system, work hard, mm -hmm. look at the stats we just went over. I mean, the failure rate's so low, and then with getting the right um, Match. Uh, you know, consultation from someone like yourself, then, right. you know, uh, you should be okay. Well, and it's true, and, you know, uh, the, the systems that are in place with franchising are the major reasons why people gravitate to franchising, but if you're not the personality to follow a system, and you're more of that entrepreneur, as Michael Gerber would say. Right. It, the best way to describe it is you can't paint the golden arches green. Right, right. You know, it just won't work. Absolutely. Either you follow the system and you'll be successful or not. But most importantly, there has to be a motivation. And everyone's motivation is different. You know, uh, the way I help people see things is if you look down the road, say, the next three, five years from today, how do you see your life being different, if at all? Right. You know, what do you want to accomplish? You know, and some, for some people, it might be doing things that they've just missed doing, like having the freedom to play golf or, you know, having the money to buy a, a, a boat and taking their family on it and being with their family and having that quality time that they just don't have in their current world. That's interesting. So you consider that positive motivation because that's the whole big picture of success in business, working hard, and then having all that personal stuff on the side. Oh, yeah. What's the end result look like? You know, what is it that you want to accomplish by being in business for yourself? I mean, what is your burning desire? Where Where is the pain now? I mean, if you look at your current situation today, you know, I'll have people that I'm working with that are making, you know, well over six-figure incomes. and they. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you again soon with another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising from Franchise Interviews. Take care, everyone. Franchise Interviews From Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia You're listening to Franchise Interviews Franchise Interviews